this is a Mercator projection, 16th century kind of ingenious um, discovery by this cartographer by the name of Gerhard Mercator. He wanted to figure out some way in which you could peel off the skin of the surface of the Earth on a globe and stretch it in such a way that the directions would remain constant or that a great circle would be a straight line in technical terms. And he de developed this, this uh, projection which uh, didn't catch on immediately, but by the middle of the uh, 18th century, it had almost become the standard map in Western civilization. People decry it today because of its distortions. It, it makes Europe bigger than it should be and so on. And uh, it has certain, obviously, disadvantages. And if it was the only projection that a, an uh, instructor would use or students would view, it would be problematical. It has an advantage, however, in that to uh, make all the directions constant, all the lines pointing to the North Pole happen to be parallel. And that means that we can play with the concept of centrality. And what I will do is simply take the 90th West Meridian, which runs through the delta of the Mississippi River, and I will cut this map. Okay, what I've done is I've cut the map at 90 degrees west, and then simply moved the center to the edges. And now we have the Afro-Eurasian landmass in the center, the mouth of the Ganges in the center of the map at 90 degrees east. So now we have an entirely different look to the world, and it's kind of an interesting how American history gets changed from an Atlantic civilization to a civilization which faces both the Atlantic and the Pacific. I could continue cutting this at 180 degrees and move it over, and I could cut it at the prime meridian, and we would get a Eurocentric version, we would get a Pacific-centered version, here we have the version with the Afro-Eurasian continent in the middle. But there's another distortion on this, and that is the equator, of course, is in the center of the Earth. Well, the equator is not, as you can see, in the center of the map, as it is in the center of the world, just by definition. So we all of a sudden realize that, look, this goes way down to the uh, Antarctic Circle, but we extend considerably north of the Arctic Circle, so we have to get the scissors out. What we have done by cutting off the bias, the, the distortion at the, at the north end of the map, is we have made Africa become more visually prominent. Mercator projection is very distorted in the high latitudes, so we just kind of eliminate them, and all of a sudden uh, you see Africa assumes a much more important role than it looked like when we started this map. There's one other thing that's happened. When I cut off the high latitude, we have a world in which water is more significant than land. Now, if I would turn this upside down and put the water hemisphere on top and put the land at the bottom, it would become even more apparent that water dominates the globe, even on a Mercator projection. But I started this whole episode just to indicate how important the center and balance, where you end a map, how you set the map up, is a matter of culture. It's, it makes it very apparent that uh, maps are a product of a particular place, of a particular culture, a particular purpose. They're all arguments, in a sense. They're all texts. Of course, they're also artifacts. And understanding our world reference map as a, um, as a point of departure sets up looking at other civilizations, other times, other places, how they have envisioned um, the world as a whole or the universe as a whole.